All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a quick demonstration of how to build a jack stay method and how to set it up and use it fairly effectively. You can use parts from around the house. Uh, I've got a couple old brake rotors, uh, some rope. I like to use a polypropylene type rope. My favorite kind is the kind that the cable company uses. What they do is they make a pull through conduit and they don't use it again. It's pretty greasy, but once you clean it up, it's a good rope and it lasts for years. Uh, you can also use the rope like I've got on the spool behind me from Harbor Freight. It's about $15, $16 for 600 feet of it. The difference there is, is it'll want to come untied so when you finish your knots or whatever, you have to go into the end of it there. So what I'm going to do is show you basically what we want to do with this is we're going to take these two brake rotors and we're going to turn these into our anchors or our weights. We're going to take a line and we can put clips on it or we can just tie it like this. And when we tie it, we're going to go in. I'm going to put just a quick bowline on it. I'm going to leave a little bit of slack there so that I can take the bitter end of my rope. And I can spread this line down here. And then I can push the end of this bitter end through here to keep it from coming untied again. Okay. And then, of course, I'm going to do the same thing with this other end. The idea behind this is giving us an anchor and a grid line that we can work through to be able to make this process work and keep us on track so that we don't get lost under the water or miss something. Because if we're five feet off, we might as well be a mile off. And again, I'm going to tie this, pull a better end through, and we have it. Now, one of the important things that we have to do with this is keeping this line taut, just like this. As we keep the line taut, we've got it, we can go down the line and we can O the line. When we O the line, if I'm going to be working in this direction, I'm going to be swimming this way with my body neutrally buoyant. I'm going to O this line or grab this line. If I'm in a river where there's some current, then I can use it as a brake, or I can use it as a pull. But I'm going to always make sure these are tight, and that's very important, keeping this where it is. The next thing we have to do is we have to attach an upline on each end. And for those that are concerned about being tethered in or something like that, technically, as long as you're on this line, you are tethered to the surface. What you do is you set this up a similar way, and I'm just going to tie a basic bowline and not tie in the bitter end on this, but the other important thing is that you have one of these on each end. On this, I've got a regular buoy. This also has to maintain its tightness. If it gets loose going up and down, it can be a problem, but what happens is as you move on the, sur on the uh, bottom, the surface follows it as well. So basically, you can use a buoy like this, and I'm going to stretch it out like so, or you can use something easy as a jug. Tie this in. Now, if you're in a grassy area where there's stuff on the bottom, but you've got decent visibility, you may want to take this, put a loop in your line, and come up to be just above that where you can see. But either way, the important thing with this is, is you set your direction of travel you want to go. If I think something might be towards the shoreline over here, I'm going to set up maybe 20, 30 feet out, and I'm going to start working that way. But my first pass is going to be on the outside. I'm going to O the line, or hold the line. I'm going to be neutrally buoyant, and I'm going to move forward as fast as I can see or feel. Now, you may be at a point to where you have no visibility, and you're looking for something kind of large, a handgun, a deer stand, whatever. You can hold it, and you can just rub that bottom. I can cover seven feet like that, moving very slowly. Okay, my first pass is going to be on the outside of my search. I'm going to come down here, get on this side, and I'm going to come in and work this. Let's just say I can see, and I can see two or three feet. I'm going to take, I'm going to stop here at this, stay in neutrally buoyant where I don't mess it up, and I'm going to move this as far as I can see or feel. Now when I turn around and come back, I'm going to always stay on this side of the line. I'm going to come back, work this in, and when I do, I'm going to have covered new ground, half of the old ground. Now again, I'm going to slide this, maybe an arm's length out, however far I decide, and when I do that now, 
I've got it to where I'm covering this new space and the old line again, and you continue till you find something. And that's the basic methods of what you're going to need to put a quick system together for a jack stay method.